It was a night filled with terror. The sounds of tornado sirens wailing across the south and midwest as violent storms approached. The lightning flashed and I could see it coming. The historic weather system left a trail of destruction across six states spawning 66 confirmed tornadoes that leveled entire communities. We lost everything. Hell, like a war zone, unimaginable. At least 93 people were killed, 78 in Kentucky alone. This is a massive event, the largest and most devastating in Kentucky's history. People of Western Kentucky have gone through an unspeakable trauma. But amid the death and destruction, there were remarkable tales of survival. Oh, hey, baby. In Barnsley, Kentucky, body cam footage capturing the moment two babies were pulled from a bathtub alive after their grandmother had placed them there before the tub was sucked out of the house by a tornado. Both of them are okay. Oh, praise God, Lord Jesus. 90 miles away in Mayfield, Kentucky, Kiana Parsons Perez was trapped inside a candle factory after a tornado ripped through it like a freight train, killing eight people. I cannot feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. I'm stuck. We are trapped. In a frantic attempt to be rescued, Kiana, a mother of four, took to Facebook Live begging to be helped from beneath the rubble. I'm really scared. I'm trying to be cool, y'all, but I'm really, really scared. Kiana Parsons Perez joins us now from Paducah, Kentucky. Kiana, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you are still healing. The community is still healing. This is all still fresh for you. How are you holding up? I am doing tolerably well. Uh, my pastor from back home, I'm from Chicago. That was his thing. He said, I'm doing tolerably well. And so it's just so unreal to believe that that happened a month ago. It is so unreal. You know, people often ask, what superpower would you want? You have this superpower of incredible calm. Watching that Facebook Live post that you made, knowing that you were buried under five feet of debris, your leg had been pinned down by a drinking fountain. Did you know that? Well, obviously, no one could ever know that they would be that composed in something this horrific. But did you know that? calm was something that, I don't know, that, that you were just part of your DNA, because I don't know many people who would have kept it together like that. I, I did not know. Um, I, my mother's a very strong woman, and she, a lot doesn't phase her. She just, you know, and I think I must have inherited that from her. Um, when stuff gets crazy, she just stay cool. And so, in that instance, um, that listen, I did have moments when I wasn't on live, when I completely lost it. Um, but I'm grateful for my faith and my family because pretty much the entire time I was on there, either I was on Facebook Live or I was talking to somebody. Somebody was calling me. Somebody was praying with me. My coworkers were all panicked. We could not all panic at the same time. Everybody couldn't be panicked. So I took it upon myself to say, look, I'm going to be cool. We're going to chill out, y'all. And I, did, I just didn't want any negativity around me because someone had said, oh, we're going to die. I'm like, no, we're not. No, we're not. It's my birthday. We're not dying tonight. I didn't want to hear that, you know, because that just makes you feel a certain type of way. And so I just didn't want that negativity. So I said, we're not dying. Let's talk about something else. And I just went on being me. I mean, you and it, to be you is a great thing because you certainly showed <laughs> uh, composure and greatness. I have to tell you, I got a little, I was laughing at you saying we're not dying today, but I was also emotional thinking about you on Facebook Live, your four children, and you knowing that that might be the only record that they have of you saying goodbye to them. And that that got me, so I cannot imagine what it was like for you knowing that your babies, your children would be seeing that video. Well, see, the thing was, they weren't supposed to see it because my daughter and my oldest daughter is 17 and she deactivated her Facebook. And I forgot that my 15 year old had it. And, and she only has it to keep up with me. She, she thinks she's my mom. But um, it was just, I didn't want anybody to tell them, but I wanted someone to come help us because I didn't want my children to worry about me. I just didn't want them to worry until they had to be because I wasn't there to keep them calm. So I didn't want my kids to know. But of course, telling Facebook not to tell your children is just like telling them to call them up and tell them yourself. So that's what happened. People start calling. And while I was there, my oldest daughter did call me. Well, I, you mentioned it was your 40th birthday. When you look at that aerial video of the aftermath and even a month later, I know your coworkers were singing happy birthday to you and... Uh, you say getting rescued 
from that, what we're looking at right now and surviving that is the best gift uh, you could have ever received. Ever. The only thing that topped that is the night I was born. So, <laughs> but this was like a re rebirth, if you will. So, listen, I love all your quotes. I love your reaction. You need to write a book <laughs> truly uh, on how to respond yeah. under crisis and keep a smile on your face. Well, the day you were born <laughs> and the day you were reborn at age 40 after surviving uh, the unimaginable and what we know so many others did not survive. That is such a blessing yeah. you and your family. Thank you so much for joining us and our thoughts and prayers remain, Thank you. Kiana, with your coworkers and all of those impacted who did lose loved ones and who did not survive. Thank you so much and best to you Thank and your you. family. Thank you for having me.